Welcome to Good Works Tractors. From snow to mow, Good Works Tractors is the place to go. Shop GoodWorksTractors.com, subscribe to our channel below, like our Facebook page, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. How are we doing today, everybody? We are going to be going over John Deere 4 Series tractors today, and believe it or not, there's at least three different series within the four series frame size uh, offered by John Deere and so we're going to take a look at three open station varieties here and starting over here on the let's see your left is going to be the 4052R in the middle here the 4052M and then a John Deere 4105 right over here in the far right so these are again all four series frame size tractors but there's some significant differences i don't want to pretend that this is going to be completely in depth and cover every single detail what i really want to do is give you a good start so you understand the main differences between the 4105 the 4m series again represented by the 4052m and then the 4r series again represented by the 4052r okay so we're going to go over the basic differences on the uh, loaders, on the operator stations, on the features that come with them standard, and some variations that you can get on those. And try to make it quick and painless for you, that way you can get out of here and uh, move on to another video, hopefully of mine. So let's step back real quick here, and I'm just going to give you a general um, specs on this unit here, this unit here, and this unit here. And so these are all relatively similar in age and hours, okay? And so this 4105 over here is a 2015. It has about 200 hours on it. This John Deere 4052M is a 2014 with about 140 hours on it. And this John Deere 4052R is a 2016 with about 87 hours on it. Price points, again, these are all equipped with just a... Tractor and a, and a loader, tractor and a loader, tractor and a loader. There's not a third function on any of these, so there's no significant upgrades, there's no air ride seat. So these are all a fairly basic configuration. And my valuations that I do, I really don't consider canopies to add a whole lot of value. Yes, some folks love them, and you do have to pay uh, three, four, five, six hundred dollars to get a canopy, but in the resale world that I live in, they don't really add a whole lot of value. So I don't even consider them when I'm pricing or valuing a tractor. The 41050 there is priced at 21,000. The 4052M is priced at 26,000. And the 4052R is priced at 33,000. So you can see there is, what are we talking, a $12,000 uh, price range there between more of an entry level model to a mid model and to a deluxe model. So the only one of these three that you can put a factory cab on is going to be the R series, the 4R series. And so you can get that with a factory cab, meaning it's going to have air conditioning and heat in there. You can find a way to add an aftermarket cab to any of these tractors, but with aftermarket cabs, you're only going to get heat. You're not going to get air conditioning. So the 4105 is uh, a little bit of a mystery to me because if you look online, it shows that production of those stopped in 2011, 2012, somewhere in that uh, uh, time era there. However, these tractors continue to be produced and, and put out and this particular model here is a 2015 model year so I'm not sure if they are actually still available at John Deere or not uh, but they sure seem to just keep putting them out even though there's not a whole lot of information so if you're just standing here looking at these tractors what I'm going to notice is that they are all roughly the same size. You know, uh, probably the 4105 looks a little bit less substantial, uh, but typically if you're looking at the, the tire size on each of them, they're very close. Uh, they're, they're off. Uh, each one of them is different by uh, a marginal difference there. So, but they're all very close to one another. I am not sure if there are multiple tire size options or not. I know that certain models do have multiple tire size options. And so that could be some of what's coming into play, but for the most part, what you see here is going to be quite representative and when i'm visually looking at it standing here i don't see how it's significant enough to make a difference so if there's a certain application that you need perhaps it's worth asking the question um, and of course tire size will also dictate how much ballast you can put liquid ballast inside of the tires so that volume inside there could slightly change but either way you're going to have a significant amount probably in the ballpark of 13 to 1500 pounds of liquid ballast in those rear tires front tire size on all three of these tractors is the same so it may look a little bit different uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a side profile here in a little bit as well but you can see that the wheelbase of the 4105 is a little bit shorter a little bit tighter this way than the uh, the other two and so it's not going to be as long of a tractor width looks to be just about the same uh, maybe slightly narrower but uh, the overall footprint just a little bit shorter front to back over here on the 4105 you're going to have 
an H165 loader, okay? And what's significant about that is that's actually the loader that's found on the three series of John Deere tractors, the three R series or the higher end version. Uh, so this is not a, a true four series front end loader on there. So uh, that being said, you can get into the four series frame, but have a little bit less loader capacity. So, but that's gonna come at a cheaper price, all right? So you move on to the 4052M and you're going to have a true four series front end loader on there. It's going to be a fixed loader, meaning that you cannot take this loader on and off very quickly. It's bolted on, okay? Um, however, you do still have the standard quick attach couplers on the front on all three of these loaders. And so this is represented by showing that I have pallet forks on here. I can take the bucket off and put a set of pallet forks on very quickly and painlessly. So you can do that with all three of these loaders. Over here on the 4052M, this is going to be an H120 loader, or I'm sorry, an, <laughs> an H180 loader. Uh, this loader does quickly come on and off if you need it to. The bucket also is going to be quick attached, so you can take that on and off, put a snow pusher, bale spear, pallet forks, grapple, whatever it is that you need to put on there, okay? So your front end loader over here on the 4105 is going to lift about 1,600 pounds to about eight and a half foot, maybe nine foot uh, high, okay? The 4052 series here, uh, the 4052 variants here, the 4M and the 4R are both gonna lift around 2,400 pounds in that ballpark to about nine and a half feet, okay? So you're gonna have more reach and you're gonna be lifting substantially more weight, roughly 50% more weight than what the H165 loader is gonna do. And again, that loader is from the three series family of tractors. So it's really the entry level model into the four series world. Now you can also get self-leveling loaders uh, or mechanical lo leveling loaders on there. So MSL, mechanical self-leveling. So basically you'll see sometimes some extra bracketry that is on the front end loader in this general area right here. And so basically as you're raising up the loader, it's gonna help keep that the loader level. So the bucket level, or if you have pallet forks on and you're lifting the pallet, you can leave it level that way. So I don't know if that's available. I don't, I've never seen it on a 4M series loader. I can't say it's 100% not available, but I've never seen it. Now there is a pretty significant weight difference in the base weight of the tractor itself. So don't talk about the loader at all because there is gonna be a variation there as well. But the base weight of the 4105 is around 3,000 pounds. You move up to these two tractors right over here, the 4M and R, and you're gonna be more like 3,800 pounds. So what that tells you is that the 4M and R series are built heavier, okay? And they need to be in order to support the larger front end loaders that are on here and the stress that can be put on both the front axle and the rear axle as with that additional uh, capacity there. So you're gonna have Yanmar engines in all of these machines here. You're gonna have a 41 horsepower Yanmar uh, over in the 4105. You're gonna have a 52 horse Yanmar and a 52 horse Yanmar in both of these machines here as well. The 4105 really only comes in that variation. Uh, there is a manual version of the 4105 delineated as the 4005. The 4052M or the 4M series, that's gonna come in the 4044M, the 4052M and the 4066M. Uh, I have seen literature on a 4049M. I am not certain that that is still produced or not, but you may see a handful of those out there somewhere. Uh, I don't even know if it's in the US, but uh, I have seen that out there, but really for the most part, 4044, 52 and 66. The same can be said for the 4R series. Again, 4044, 52 and 66 with a few spatterings of that 4049R. Don't really know the rhyme or reason to that. Uh, over on the 4105, you are going to have a two range hydrostatic transmission. All right, so you're just gonna have high and low. Uh, again, that's gonna be part of what gets you to the price point that you're at on this machine over here. On the 4M and the 4R, you're gonna have a three range hydrostatic transmission. So you pick up that medium range, which I do find to be very handy. However, I think gearing and the different uh, machines here allows for uh, a good overlap, regardless of the transmission type, type that you're gonna get. Now, in the 4M and 4R, you can get what's called a power reverser transmission, which means you're gonna have a slap handle or a shuttle shift, and you're gonna have to change gears, that kind of thing as well. I have created a video on that so that you can see what a power reverser machine is versus a hydrostatic machine. There is a difference there, uh, along with a cost difference. So if you're doing a lot of loader work, power reversers are not as efficient. The slap handle does make it easier to change forward uh, direction quickly from forward to reverse and vice versa. However, the hydrostatic is really the way to go. So what would determine the right tractor for me if I was in the market shopping is one, price point. Price point's always 
a big deal, you know. And again, with about a twenty-one thousand dollar price point, twenty-six, and then thirty-three, that's a pretty significant difference there. And so, first, I'm going to ask myself, what do I need to do with the tractor? You know, do I have a real large requirement for uh, for front end loader capability that is going to exceed what the forty-one hundred five has on there? Do I want some more bells and whistles or more options? Um, what you're going to see on the 4M series, it's going to lack some of those bells and whistles on there where that, that you can only get on the 4R series, okay? Um, some of the other things I would look at is do I want a three range hydrostatic transmission? Are you used to a three range? Do you think it's a big deal? You cannot get that on the 4105 there at all. The 4105 is really going to be your most basic utility work tractor. If you're only doing utility projects and you're considering perhaps a 3 series, well then this might be a really good upgrade for you. And reason being is for me, I really like stability and uh, safety when I'm doing my projects. And the 4105 is going to give you still that 3 series capability on the front end loader, but it's going to give you more weight, more stability on laterally side to side. Uh, that's going to allow you to feel safer, a little bit higher in the seat for visual, um, you know, to be able to see a little bit better all the way around. It's going to give you more visibility all the way around as well in the operator station by sitting up a little bit higher. And so you might have those benefits there with the bigger tires and everything else that's on there also. Now, if you're looking for a tractor that can do everything you ask of it, still be hydrostatic, have a lot of the bells and whistles that, uh, and creature comforts that are nice, like a suspension seat, uh, cruise control, motion match, load match, speed match, that kind of thing, then perhaps the 4R series is the way to go. It is definitely going to be the most comfortable ride that you have in all these. If you spent, planned on spending a lot of time in your in your seat, there's definitely an advantage to going with the 4R series. Uh, it's going to ride a lot smoother. Everything from the, the rubber floor mat here to the suspension seat, armrest, that kind of thing as well, even the tilt steering, okay? So it's meant to give the operator comfort, okay, and the, and the loca location of the loader joystick even. So that being said, that comes with a cost, right? So there's a tractor out there for everybody, and it can seem overwhelming and confusing as to why John Deere, Kubota, Massey, everybody creates all these different options out there, but they do so because if they weren't out there, then people would be trying to, it'd be even tougher to figure out what tractor is the one for them. So you really have a lot of options to choose from here. Some of the other things you can only get on the 4R series are gonna include uh, things such as load match, motion match, and speed match, okay? And there's also an automotive style cruise control that's on the 4R series. You can add cruise control to the 4M series, but it's not gonna be the same style that that is found on the 4R series. Also, starting on the 4R series and up, you can get these three-point hitch assist controls. And so it actually allows you to um, try to connect to the three-point hitch by raising and lowering while you're off the operator station. So there's some controls back here that allow you to uh, raise and lower the three-point itself, even forward and reverse uh, the tractor. So you can back up to your attachment or forward or whatever you may need to do there. Pretty basic operator station here on the 4105, which is just fine, you know. Um, I don't think tractors need to be overly complicated. So you got a parking brake there, foot brake, locking rear differential, select tune four-wheel drive with that black handle, and then your two-range hydro. Turn signals there, I'll hop around to the other side. Little cup holder on the fender, Orange handles throttle, yellow is PTO. Turn that on and off that way and light controls, okay? Black handle back there is your three point raise and lower. Uh, loader lockout, just to lock out the functionality of the loader so you can't use it if you don't want to. Seat adjust and rate of drop. Your rate of drop controls how fast or slow your three point goes up and down. And then you've got your forward and reverse pedals there. You can see that indicated by the arrows that are on them. Fuel fill is up top and fuel gauge, RPMs, and temperature on the display. Operator station on the 4052M. A Little bit of an upgrade. You have a split brake now over here. You can combine those like they are right now or you can flip up this little lever and uh, operate the brakes independently. Parking brakes right here, you still have your locking rear differential. You have the three range hydro plus neutral on there. And select your two and four wheel drive right there. Again, our seat adjust and rate of drop down below. You do have um, 
regen controls up here along with light switch controls and uh, ability to turn your turn signals on there and scroll through a dash. Still no tilt steering on here. Fuel fill is in the back, which is nice, a lot easier to get to. Bunch of knockouts there to add additional switches. Turn your PTO on and off again. Now a lot of these paneling here on the 4M and the 4R series are very similar. Well, actually, let's just say they're identical. So the, the hood and the fenders and the trim pieces here are all the same on the 4R. Just pay attention when we take a look there. Still have your uh, forward and reverse pedals down there. Throttle control here. Again, a, a simple layout. Now on the 4R series, you know, this is a deluxe series, so it does have some more bells and whistles, more options. Have that padded floorboard there, split brake still, parking brake, locking rear differentials, rate of drop. That's a weight adjust for your seat on that suspension there, which is nice. Your uh, range select there, four wheel drive. Again, the uh, regen controls, lights, turn switches, the ability to scroll through the dash. Oh, I didn't show you the dash in the last one, but it looks the same. Have those armrests there in that seat. I love that. Again, here's your three-point hitch assist controls. I believe that's the correct term. Fuel fill. Same fender. Looks the same as the uh, 4M, except they're utilizing this. You know, there's a knockout there, so they can take that out and put this on there. That's where you have your automotive style cruise control your rollout control as well so when you take your foot off the pedal um, you can either have it come to an abrupt stop or a really long drawn out slow stop that kind of thing okay one of the other differences in the operator station is going to be loader joystick controls and so on the 4105 you're going to have uh, controls that are coming right out of the fender there the inside of the fender which uh, allows for a little bit more ergonomic control and, and comfort for the operator. The 4M series is gonna have a loader control that's tied in right with the loader itself. And so you're not gonna have that loader joystick or the plumbing for it unless you have a loader purchased with your tractor. And so that loader joystick is coming out of uh, the frame, the mast, the right mast of the tractor here and gonna be a little bit further out from the operator. So perhaps you have to have a little bit more fatigue now, that being said, I've used tractors that have had this style of setup many, many, many times. I have not found them to be an issue. Going over to the 4R series, you are going to see again that more ergonomic location uh, tucked right back near where the operator is sitting. The only one of these series that are going to allow for tilt steering are going to be the 4R series. The other two are going to have fixed steering. They also are not going to have cruise control. Now, cruise control is an option to add on to the 4M series, but it is not going to be standard. The 4R series, of course, does have cruise control. As far as the back end of these tractors go, they are all going to be fairly similar. And I say that because of the fact that uh, you're going to have category one three point hitches on all these, 540 RPM rear PTO on all of these, okay? And so there's no differences there. Uh, where you are going to see a difference is going to be on the sway arms here on the, on the bottom. And so this is going to allow for easier adjustability where you can uh, put a pin in and out of those holes and have real good control to be able to hook up and make it a lot easier to attach and detach to uh, three-point attachments with those adjustable, easily adjustable sway arms down there. Now you can see the linkages on the 4M series. Well, you got to just turn a rod there a whole bunch. It's a lot slower process and if you haven't moved them in a while, they can definitely be mm, not the easiest thing to, to adjust all the time. Again, another version of those uh, real easily adjustable lower sway arms on the 4R series. You do see there's draw bars on all three of these machines as well. Well, I want to thank you so much for watching. Again, this is not meant to be all inclusive. This is just meant to give buyers that are in the market a good starting point, a good overview, and an ability to be able to see these machines side by side by side <laughs> and have a general understanding of the differences there. So again, a real entry level down here, almost a hybrid 3-4 series, 
I say that because the frame size is more like a 4 series, but the front end loader capacity is more like a 3 series. So then you have a bit of a mid-grade here, and then you have a deluxe version over here, okay? So it uh, gives you a good variety here to, to take a look at, you know, horsepower configurations and 44 all the way up to 66 on these two, 41 horsepower over there on, on that guy there. So if you wouldn't mind, take a moment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page. If you would, check out our other videos that we have. We do a lot of comparisons and individual overviews so you can get a really good look at a certain model. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.